hello. Hey, what's up, Mr. Morrison? The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> I know, where it's it's long overdue that our friendship hits this level. I agree. How are you uh, doing are today? Are we what? doing video or audio? No, just audio is good. All right, cool. Uh, I'm doing well. It's always nice to do an AMA and see your lovely fans. I They started linking it in my chat. I can't control them. I, try I to know. I don't, I don't blame you for that. It's oh, all okay. good. Because I thought I read that you had specifically said that I had sick them on you. Someone so. showed me a message, but it turned out not to be your account. So admittedly, I was duped, and I apologize. But it looked like you were telling people to fuck with my AMA. Okay. Because that, sound, that sounded a little slanderous there, but I'll, I'll let you slide on that one. All let's, right? let's, come on. <laughs> you have a lot of different Destiny names all over the place. So that's why I, w I was fooled by one of them. Okay. Um... Are so, we uh, are we live and going? Yeah, we're yeah we're here. Oh, so that's not fair. You already got me to admit the slander <laughs> three minutes in. <laughs> that's okay. All right, so um, let me get so let me give you a let me give you a little background about how how I view these types of things. Then you can see where I'm coming from, and then you can either um, alleviate these concerns or or we can go from there. Okay. Sure thing. So I've been involved in this um, I say industry of streaming for the past I'd say about seven years pre pre for a pretty long time and so since pretty much the birth of streaming more or less at least as a monetizational or monetizable platform and I see a lot of really fucking stupid shit. Um, I'm sure that regardless if we agree or disagree on anything, I'm sure that at the very least you agree that there are a lot of fucking idiots in this arena. Um, and I that would goes say for mostly idiots. Yeah, that goes for players, business owners, um, consultants, agencies. Like there are just a lot of really really stupid people. Um, I took it upon myself when I started to try to learn as many of the ins and outs of the technology, of the business, of the legal, as, as many facets as I could, because I quickly realized that you can't really rely for anybody or rely on anybody in this area for advice on anything, because there's a lot of snake, uh, snake oil salesmen. So Q, the video game attorney, I see that you tweet <laughs> and you come in and you talk about some things sometimes, and you like to, um, you like to flaunt that attorney badge pretty hard. It's in your name. But some of the things that I see you say sometimes are a little bit questionable. And I guess the first big thing that we can talk about would be the uh, the Sky Williams uh, YouTube, Google, IP kind of thing. Yeah, sure, and I'm happy to. And just to, I guess, backtrack and, mm -hmm. you know, you did your background. I'll do mine quickly. Sure. Uh, I came into this. In, I used to work in-game dev, so I was a developer. And I went to law school during that and uh, got into uh, the legal field as a trademark attorney at a big law firm where I was going to. And uh, Candy Crush came out and started suing a bunch of little guys over the word candy, or you know, even just opposing their own trademarks or filing takedowns. And I was watching the Reddit post, realized you know that sucks, someone should help them, and saw that I could. Uh, so actually, after I, I helped a couple people against that, uh, Candy Crush actually, I worked with the IGDA, the, uh, the Game Developers Association. I don't know if they're relevant to this, but they're, uh, they're a pretty big name in the actual game dev scene. And Candy Crush backed off, apologized, stopped a lot of the, what, are they, what they were doing, and Reddit actually started calling me video game attorney. My name on there previously was something else, and uh, I just ran with it. It was obviously good marketing. I'm not going to lie about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started doing AMAs every week uh, to game developers in the game dev subreddit, so not in the big one. Uh, very small community, and, and basically what it was was I cleared it with my bar association. I made sure I was within the ethical rules, mm -hmm. and I would give out general legal advice. So if they wanted to know, you know, what is a trademark? How is it different than a copyright? When should I file both? Uh, I would answer questions like that every week, and it just really snowballed into a, a lot of stuff. Uh, for the first two years I did this, I would say 95% of my clients were entirely pro bono. Uh, I was fresh out of law school. I had $300,000 in debt, living on a buddy's couch, uh, and just growing a, a solo little shop and didn't really think I was going to go crazy with it, but it, it kept growing and we kept getting more and more clients. And I realized very quickly that no one in this le on the legal side of this industry knows what Twitch is. They don't know what uh, they don't know game devs. So I did. And it really let me combine my basic legal knowledge. But admittedly, I was only an attorney for about a year uh, with my, my actual video game knowledge. And that's when I partnered with the guy uh, who is a litigator. He's been an attorney for 15 years, Michael Lee. That's why my law firm is Morrison Lee. Mm -hmm. And uh, Michael is was, you know, he absolutely was a better attorney than I was back then. I think we both kind of know our stuff now. But, uh, you know, it really let us power, uh, power up together and, and work together. We've hired great associates since then, and we've been able to do a lot of good around the internet. I know it's very popular to say, you know, we're ambulance chasers because we jump into every thread, and we do. I mean, 
listen, we don't, it, it's both things. I'm not going to sit here and lie that it doesn't work out well for us when we help somebody, but we also do a lot of good. I mean, we've, we've helped a countless amount of uh, YouTubers. We rep more esports players than anyone in the world. If you name an esports player, chances are we're their attorney or they don't have one. And we've single-handedly changed a lot of the way those esports contracts look with orgs from Cloud9 to TSM all the way down to, you know, whoever, fill in the blank. We've worked with everybody. Uh, on YouTube and Twitch, that's more Michael's side of things. But I certainly, I work on DMCA takedowns both on both sides of it every day. Uh, and I, I absolutely, you know, know this area of law better than almost every attorney out there because they just don't work here. They don't know what Twitch is. There are no Twitch attorneys. So we market to that crowd of course but we also know it gotcha so i'm just curious when you say that you've helped a lot of people and, and you guys have done a lot of that have, have there been any cases that you've actually been involved in re relating to like dmca stuff or twitch or youtube or is this more just general advice have you actually represented somebody in court and litigated something in one or is this just like so general the, advice yeah well that's the big difference so 99 percent of the law is not in court and it's not one or the other so we if it's general advice or something like that i don't take credit for that i don't say they're my client but with uh, you know the major uh, esports players around, or with huge game studios, or major Minecraft servers, uh, High Pixels, the biggest Minecraft server around, and they publicly you know let everyone know where their attorney. Most of the law is transactional. Most is uh, trademarks, copyrights, DMCA takedowns. It's very rare you go to court. I have personally never been to court. I am not a litigator. I am not even allowed to go to court. Uh, it's a different thing entirely sure i understand and, yeah, and so far that. as like dmca takedowns have you successfully represented anybody not necessarily in a court situation but in some type of counter uh paperwork or whatever where, where you have actually gotten a dmca takedown reversed or some type of yeah, copy for strike sure. a, a, a countless amount i mean lewis cromwell i believe is his name is the a movie review channel uh one of the cases we did under fupa uh he made a video thanking michael and myself and saying you know how how he was basically screwed and we got him out of it and i apologize if that's not his name i wasn't really ready to chat with you today i'm in the middle of setting up my new apartment mm -hmm. and uh but yeah i think that's his name lewis cromwell and uh yeah he made a video about us and uh we've done a ton of a ton of other stuff i mean it, you can honestly google around and see a lot of it the dmcas are not like so trademarks for example there's a public database you can go see all that very easily mm -hmm. uh dmcas are usually privileged and that's why we we you know for lack of a better word brag about it less uh you know it's it's just we're not allowed to talk about most of the way those that are settled come with an nda uh, yeah, of so, course, settlements in general, I think, are, are exactly. usually have an NDA attached, right? Yeah, because, yeah. And that hurts, that hurts two things. It hurts us being able to talk about it, but more importantly, it, it lets people, especially, you know, throughout Twitter and Reddit, say, well, you know, Ryan's lying about this. This never happens. When it happens all the time, just every example is under an NDA. And I don't even mean about my stuff. I mean uh, specifically about making a fan game, for example. Those games, I see people's lives ruined quite a bit over fan games, and I'm, I don't have an example to point to so people don't believe me. And they, I don't know what they think I'm getting by profiting off saying don't make a fan game, but that's a common accusation that I just do that to scare people on Reddit. Gotcha. I don't get, you know, I don't get the point A to point B there, but it's it's definitely a thing that sucks. Sure, I understand. And then just for the audience, um, and I'm guessing the reason why the settlements are typically NDA is to protect companies because if that was made public information, then it would be easier for people that are litigating on the defensive side or whatever to reach settlements or whatever, right? Yep, because yeah. uh, the amounts are su exactly the amounts are super secretive, and also mm -hmm. on the flip side. If Sony shuts something down, you know, say, uh, sorry, Nintendo shut things down very publicly and didn't get NDAs and now look at Nintendo's reputation. So the rest of the industry saw that and they won't even send a cease and desist unless they're sure they can keep it silent. Sure. I understand. OK, so let's talk specifically in regards to the Sky Williams thing, because I think this was the sure. first time when I started to get a little irritated. So. I think that the um, basically the the big problem that people were having was that YouTube's c content ID system was very very Nazi like. Um, I think it went so far as if somebody filed a claim that I think they were even retroactively awarding revenue. It was insane. But at the very least, they, like you were instantly claimed all of the revenue that was being generated on that video. It was very 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 over, uh, far reaching in terms of the impact, and a lot of people started to um, a lot of people were very upset about this. So people started to make YouTube videos, started to complain on Twitter, and then Sky Williams came. Came out advised by the video game attorney and pretty much presented what seemed to me to be a pretty ridiculous uh, argument in favor of Google. Do you want to talk about that for a little bit? Sure. Yeah. So uh, Sky is a fr this is this is exactly where the earlier clarification comes in. Sky is mm -hmm. a friend, not a client. And yeah, I, I like Sky that. a lot. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, an important so, distinction to make. So I understand that. Yep, okay. for sure. And uh, when he was doing, an, I forget where the interview was, but he went on somewhere to debate the DMCA. Mm -hmm. And you know how Sky is. He wanted to do the hot take and he wanted to be pro DMCA. And I talked to him about it. 
And, you know, admittedly, his example wasn't exactly what we talked about. And he went a little over the top with it. But it's, you know, both, uh, you know, friend duty and also I understand where he's coming from to, to go over his side of things. Mm-hmm. And his side of things, I believe what he said was, you know, did, did, did the DMCA is rampant and takes things down all over the place over probable. And you I guess you brought up probable cause. But your argument was uh, that's too much. And Sky said, well, yeah, but it's like if you think there's a murder, you arrest everyone who could potentially be involved in that murder. And you're you said, well, no, there, there has to be probable cause. Yeah. Now, the argument there is the probable cause through content ID is that there is an exact match code code. It, it, it uses code. So it use it matches music to music. It matches video to video. That is arguably probable cause there to say, yeah, this is enough to take this down. The important sure, distinction this is, well, is, but this is a little yeah. bit of a misdirection because we're not necessarily we're not talking about content ID here. We are talking about BMCA claims that people actually levy against videos for copyright strikes. Gotcha. All right. right. Sorry. So then 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 uh, to be fair, I mean, it's been a year. So it's. Yeah. You know, no, well, I understand. It, but it's an important distinction because the content sure. ID you, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't think your channel can ever get a copyright strike via content ID because content right. ID will recognize it immediately. And then usually revenue is claimed. Sometimes the video is blocked in certain countries. Sometimes it's not allowed to be posted at all, but you don't get a copyright strike, whereas a DMCA is something. Thing, or I don't actually even think legally, technically, it is a DMCA, but the, when you file a Google copyright takedown notice, um, that's something that a person, an actual entity, has to in- initiate. They have to do that. It's not an automated process. And, that, and that's where a lot of the abuse was coming in because people, the, the stories were that people were literally founding companies just to massively file these DMCAs on the hopes that people don't really look into them too much. And then they were claiming revenue from other channels because people were too scared to fight back against them. And that's where you and I got into it. And mm-hmm. we, it's not even about the first part. It's about the, is this the same as perjury in a courtroom? And listen, well, it's as not of, a courtroom. But as of court, recently, yeah. as of recently, yeah, but that wasn't, but I mean, we can talk about that for a little bit if you but want. I, but, I don't mean to jump all over. I'm, sure. I'm really not. No, no, that's to. fine. I, so, I want to hit everything. Yeah, so, the perjury so thing, in start... my opinion, is a little bit different. If you've got like Jared Kushner is testifying to like a Senate <laughs> Intel Committee <laughs> under that's oath. unfair. And it's he perjures himself. Yeah, it is, sure. But like, I mean, you know, me DDoSing somebody is probably technically a crime too but like if it's not being enforced at all you know like it's kind of a to, to equate the two is a little disingenuous in my opinion right like when i you... mean i well no i disagree mm-hmm. entirely because i think if this is the just the prime example of the internet or the law being way behind the internet we're catching up to it so the dmca takedown was written by a bunch of legislators who don't know how to check their email it was sure. written with the best of intentions but when you submit a false dmca you are committing a crime in in all 50 states you are May- committing a crime. maybe yeah but but even if you are and i'm not even sure if that's necessarily true because what if you file the dmca internationally what if you're in another country and you file it like the and, and you say well, that's that why i said in all 50 states yeah if you are an american citizen sure listen uh, you can do a lot internationally mm-hmm. that you can get away with yeah that's just it's un- there's a term judgment proof and judgment proof basically means i can fuck with you because you can't sue me i have yeah. no assets uh this is different this is uh let's say you're american just for the point of this argument mm-hmm. uh then there is actually pretty easy ways to find everybody uh there are no truly anonymous companies there are no truly anonymous vpns if you get it good enough i mean i'm sure there are i'm not i'm i'm positive there are but usually it's not that Usually you get what happened with Jim Sterling, where a review company doesn't like a, a review and files a takedown inappropriately and, and, in my opinion, illegally, and there could be real re- uh, repercussions for that. But, yeah, there could be, um, but the amount of effort that you have to go through with that. If I found a business somewhere and I use an LLC to start levying DMCA claims at you and I use a registered agent for the LLC, like, you've got to go through a lot of work. You've got to do a lot of like subpoenaing and shit to actually find out who owns like this company and who's uh, actually— Yeah, but most people don't do it with that much forethought. Most DMCAs we see at our law firm mm-hmm. are done by some— Are idiot. done by they're idiots. Done, yeah, for they're sure. They're done by some troll who just thinks that it's funny to get this video taken down or they're in a fight and he's, he's DMCAing his ex-friend's channel or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And that is that is potentially up to five years in jail per DMCA. Now, to be realistic, of course, that has never happened and probably never will happen. But it's something that is at least worth acknowledging that it's a crime. And I think when this when the legislative people catch up with the Internet and see how much money is here, see how much, uh, you know, time is spent here, this stuff's going to be taken more seriously. But Sure. Sorry to jump forward like that. No, In the I immediate, understand. To your immediate, to what you were saying originally, uh, I think our argument, and correct me if I'm wrong, was more about is this YouTube's fault or the people issuing the takedowns? And Pretty you were much, saying yeah. it's it's both, right? Well, my, yeah, my, I mean, I understand that. I know that Google has to act in some ways to qualify for the, I think it would like the safe harbor provision of yeah. the DMCA. You have to show good faith as a company that you're doing your best to remove copyright infringing content so that you don't be, you're not held personally liable by the government. But I think my argument was that it seems like Google took that really fucking far in some ways. And I have, I have a hard time believing that like uh, under some kind of court case, Google would be compelled 
told to do things like strip the ad revenue from a video instantaneously. Well, that's why I brought up content ID, Mm because the only thing Google does that's above and beyond what they have to do Mm -hmm. is the content ID. They don't have to do content ID. Uh, they, they basically, the ori- what they do have to do though, is if you upload a star Wars video, even if it's a parody, even if it's something that you absolutely have the right to do, mm-hmm. if Dis- if Disney says, take this down, Google has to take it down. YouTube has to take it yep. down or and the they're onus also is on liable. you to fight it. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the flip side of that is with the content ID system, that's Google kind of saying, we don't want to deal with all these DMCA takedowns. So we're going to just police this ourselves. Twitch used to do it a lot more uh, forcefully too with the audio mm-hmm. uh, blacking out and they, they pulled back on that. But uh, YouTube just went kind of harder at it because they get more stuff than they can deal with, to be honest. Uh, when more people realize you can counter a DMCA, YouTube could no longer keep up with it. Uh, when it was just takedowns and it was gone, that was easy for them. Mm-hmm. The second that all of a sudden they have to d- mediate all these counters, uh, they all of a sudden just went content ID to, to kind of just make it a foolproof system. And of course, of course, foolproof systems don't exist and it's overzealous. But what I was saying with, in that thing, and listen, to be fair, I don't think we got off on the right foot. I don't think we liked each other too much. And I think tempers were involved. But in a, in a truly looking at the facts situation, the, uh, the people I think are wrong there and should be to blame here are the people issuing those fake takedowns. I don't care if they're trolls. I don't care if it's somebody who, you know, is hiding himself. YouTube is less uh, at fault, in my opinion, than the assholes abusing this system. It's not a bad law. There's bad people who use it. But that so but that's not really how like legal stuff works, right? Like you, you can't really say that like, well, this law is kind of bad, but the bad people are the people abusing it, right? You whatever law you've written, um, we could especially dive into things like tax law, right? Like people that use certain tax loopholes or whatever in order to minimize you, you know, their tax liability and whatnot. Like you can't really say that, well, these people shouldn't be abusing us, right? Any law or rule or regulation you write, you should always be taking into account the people that will stretch it the hardest, right? These For are sure, but our legislators things. are idiots. I mean, we have a, a group of very dumb people running the government they don't Mm -hmm. understand technology and those are the people writing this stuff and then youtube has to make it work uh google doesn't want the dmca to be the i mean yeah the so the dmca is not just a takedown the dmca is the over uh the the entire all-encompassing law of copyright with the internet right now basically for the most part there's of course other things that affect it but Mm -hmm. it's it's what makes it so youtube can exist because without youtube you they would be held personally liable for every for copyright everything. infringing thing that's hosted on the website, and they would have to fight Ex- countless lawsuits. Yeah. Exactly. So this this lets it work out, and unfortunately, uh, there's no good answer here. I mean, do you have a better solution to, than than this system? I mean, well, it's sure. I mean, I had one. some criticisms that Sky seemed to think were ridiculous, and that maybe YouTube was a little bit too far reaching in terms of how they handled some of the some of the copyright strike stuff. The I think I'm not sure how I feel about getting a permanent strike if you try to refute a copyright strike and you lose. I don't know if that's something that should be kept around. Um, the idea that you instantly get to claim everybody's revenue after you file a, a, a copyright takedown on YouTube is also a little bit extreme, in my opinion. And it sounds like you agree with that but sky's yeah, video 100%. yeah but sky's video was definitely it sounded like they wanted to move 100 percent of the blame off of google and all of it onto the legislator legislators themselves which unfortunately as i'm sure you also agree isn't very realistic because in terms of legislation we're probably not going to see too much regarding internet shit for another fucking 40 or 50 years until younger people get older and get into office or something right so it seems like we're kind of waiting on google themselves to do something to revamp their 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 dmca safe harbor compliance well or so what i I, and listen, yeah, I mean, it, it, we're same page. Uh, Sky went a little crazier than what we had originally talked about, but not. I don't think overzealously so. I think the argument was more about who gets the majority of the blame, and we were sure. saying the people doing the takedowns, and you were saying YouTube. I, I still my, the, agree the, with the big what reason. I said. The big reason why I took issue with Sky's video is, is because it seemed to. I'm like that. That probable cause is like a really, in my opinion, you would know more, but in my opinion, the probable cause thing is like a really important cornerstone of American freedoms. That an officer can't just come up to me and arrest me because he thinks I killed somebody. He needs a reason to actually. Until I point at you. I mean, if I'm not agreeing with that. I'm just saying the sure. law is stupid. And if, if sure. I point at you and say he's the murderer, that's probable cause. And that's what I, I guess what Sky and I were arguing is that is what the DMCA is. It's someone pointing that finger. So then YouTube is if, – if YouTube is the cop in that analogy, they now have probable cause and they have to go after them. Sure, but even uh, at that, it's not – that's not going to be like a full arrest. That will be like a detention for questioning or whatever. That's not going to be like a full arrested process and waiting for his day in court, right, just on that one person's accusation. Whereas like a copyright strike, that's literally like you're done. Like you're going to jail like and that's it. You lost your shit. Like a copyright strike was, is very, very severe on, on a YouTube channel, you know? Yeah, sure. I mean it's it's – 
it's not always though. I mean, you can absolutely counter it, and that's what we'd spend most of our day doing is well, helping people the... who did something with fair use actually counter sure, it. Sure, but that's the scary part is the countering. You always have so much more to lose than you do to gain, right? Like yeah, if... and just to be clear, so everybody mm -hmm. knows, when you counter a video, everyone uh, there's, there's a lot of bad information out there, and this is actually why I got so heated with you mm -hmm. is. Despite your intentions at the time, I felt you were spreading bad law kind of on purpose. And I, okay. I guess what that kind of, wasn't the case. Sure. What kind but, of bad law well, did you think I was spreading? About this in particular, about the content ID kind of being overzealous in YouTube's fault. And it's not the people abusing it. There was nothing to lose if you did abuse it. Uh, you know, it was just stuff that I, I didn't really agree with at all. I still don't. But what I'm saying is the uh, the, the uh, where the hell was I going with that? <laughs> What well, were you just talking about? We, we, so in terms of like the take down, the copyright strike, you 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 have nothing. Well, here, I, I'm curious. What do you think about the nothing to lose or nothing to gain, everything to lose? Why do you think that's a bad? Right. So that's where we we're going. Right, right, right. So when you counter something, it's uh, it's daring the other party to sue you. Mm -hmm. So if Disney issues a takedown and uh, I have my Star Wars, you know, fan review up or whatever it is, and maybe it is fair use, but if I counter it now, Disney has to sue me to get it back down. That's mm -hmm. how the counter works. And uh, if you're going to do that, it's going to you're daring Disney to sue you. And that's not a, a thing we usually recommend to a lot of our guys, even if they're right. And that's what yeah, sucks but, to wait, be wait, in our position. But this sounds like my position then, that if somebody DMCAs my shit and I want to fight it, I have very little to gain and everything to lose. That was my position. That's why I felt like it was so one sided. But why are you mad at YouTube then and not Disney? YouTube doesn't make that enforcement policy. YouTube doesn't make that counter policy. That's all the DMCA. Because That's not I, I guess I, I, I felt like law. YouTube could put a little bit more of the onus on the copyright filer rather than just like signing a web form that says, oh, I promise that this is really my stuff and then push a but button. But that's not YouTube. That's the DMCA. That is literally what it says. That That is all... Everything in that one page form from the the swearing under oath, uh, swearing mm -hmm. under perjury, penalty of perjury to, to what is actually in there to the the actual paragraph you have to type out. If, if I please don't anybody listening to this, go file a DMCA. But if you want to bring up the page, you'll see you actually have to type out the paragraph. You can't even copy and paste it. Well, and they, they well, you try. just you just have to you just have to sign your name. You don't have to type about the paragraph. But um. I, or maybe on Google, you certainly do. No. That's what we go through. Really? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I just did some today. Oh, you absolutely I've, I mean, I've, I've filed DMCAs in the, or copyright takedowns in the past, and I've never had to type out the whole paragraph. Is that through YouTube? Because YouTube probably has a little simpler thing, but it's not a true DMCA. So that's another oh, sure. thing. All yeah, is that the YouTubes YouTube. aren't actual DMCA legal takedown notices. They're right. copyright infringement, whatever Google's exactly. internal system is Exactly, and it's the same called. thing the Apple App Store does, where it's not a real DMCA takedown. That's why we do the real ones, which is that one-page form through the, the, the parent company, mm -hmm. where they have to comply. They don't have any any choice uh but you know apple basically does what you want youtube to be doing and apple doesn't comply with the dmca they don't do automatic takedowns and they instead force uh mediation between the two parties but that's apple saying to the government you know come and find us come and penalize us we're bigger than you sure kind of ballsy of so, apple youtube's not doing it sure and i so, don't think youtube should have to i don't think that's their responsibility if they want to send lobbyists and try to get the law changed all good but I, we're doing the same thing. We work with lobbyist groups to try to change this law also. I agree with you philosophically. I'm just saying it's not YouTube's responsibility to fix this. It's our legislators, and they're not doing fuck all to do that. Okay, so when, when you say that YouTube is doing what they have to do to legally comply with, with the DMCA safe harbor provision or whatever, why, why did YouTube roll back that provision then? Will you automatically get revenue from a channel that you file a takedown claim on? It seems like I, YouTube has a little bit of wiggle room in terms of how they process these, and I think that's all I was asking for is to make them not so absurdly one-sided, which was a big problem with these copyright takedown requests. Well, to be fair, you know, it's a little easier to have this conversation and get to a common ground than it is at 1 a.m. on Twitter screaming at each other with sure. all of your, your followers tell, calling me a cuck. But, uh, you know, it's – it's uh, yeah, I mean that's true. I mean I'm, I, we can fight the fight, but I think we're pretty same page on that. Okay. Well, then I guess we don't necessarily have any big disagreements there, but... um. But let's talk about the other stuff that always comes up, uh, Sargon and H3H3, or, or anything else you want to <laughs> oh, talk sure. about. Oh, sure. Yeah, the Sargon thing wrestled me pretty hardcore. Um, I don't know how much you follow me or know Who my... the fuck is Sargon? Okay, so Sargon is basically a guy that does um, right-leaning commentary online or whatever. So I had a large, a long-form discussion with another... I thought you were right-leaning, to be honest. I thought he... That's why I, I... I thought you were an alt-right guy the first time we talked, which is why I also... Uh, didn't love you. Oh, well, I'm actually a huge <laughs> social justice warrior lib cook, so... Um, Good. Um, so, basically, <laughs> I had a huge discussion with JonTron that lasted two or three hours, and um, 
what Sargon did was Sargon clipped 30 second clips out of this conversation and he posted them to another YouTube channel with ti- with the defamatory titles, right? I don't care about the, whatever title, but basically, but it was just straight ripped off my YouTube, right? So I DMC at all four clips and he threw a huge hissy fit and everybody thought that I was in the wrong, blah, 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 blah. But um, yeah, that was that. And then in the course of all of that arguing, my best friend, the video game attorney, showed up on Twitter <laughs> to uh, take Sargon's side there. If anyone tweets at me, hey, I want to mess with Destiny, my immediate reaction is, sure, it's sure. free, let's do it. Okay. Uh, you know, and I, I, listen, and I, I understand that because if, because day. I do the same I, thing. Because if people tweet that you know the video game attorney is up, then I'll, hell yeah, I'll go and fire some shots right, at Twitter. But exactly. when you delete them all afterwards, I think it, it kind of looks Well, so bad. that's – two. so two things. I – I, listen, I get listen, you have all made it very clear about the deleting tweets, but I do it. I'm going to do it today. Look at my Twitter from last night. I shit post for three hours about fixing my computer because okay. I'm retarded and don't know how to fix it. But my followers do. And then I don't want clients or other people coming to my Twitter every day and seeing that I just shit post all night. So I delete my tweets all the time and I'm going to do that forever more. It doesn't mean I'm embarrassed by them. It doesn't mean I'm afraid of them. But it does mean when someone brings up something like Sargon and just keep saying, why do you help Sargon? Why do you love Sargon? I have no idea who Sargon was. I until today they sent that screenshot where I said, uh, I, "I think it was if you want me to show Destiny reality for you, winky face." Yeah. You know that's not at all what uh, I, I. Clearly, we never went forward with it. I never represented him. I probably had one of our associates look into it. They said absolutely not, and that was it. I mean, it, whether it was legally or because he sucks as a human, I don't know. But we just didn't help him, and it never went past that one tweet. And yeah, I deleted that tweet, but not even because of that. I just deleted that one tweet because. I delete my tweets every night, and not all of them. I save the best of. My Twitter history is basically a best of video game attorney. I delete most of my stuff, and I know that's frustrating. I know you don't like it, but it, it's just life. You know, that's how I that's how I clean it up. Gotcha. Do you ever think about making a second, like a shit posting Twitter account? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I might have one. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good. I never <laughs> thought about that. Uh, I mean, listen. I I obviously am an opinionated person. I I still talk a lot through my more formal channels but now i have nine people whose salary and livelihood depends on me not being an asshole on twitter so i try to tone it down i mean literally just we've now been doing this for about a year if you go back and see me a year ago versus what i post now it's two different worlds but it's uh i'm still out there a lot it's just toned down more and yeah maybe i have a glass of whiskey see sargon tweet me and then want to take it down i don't know but i that's not my uh that's certainly not the kind of people we work with and certainly if it was actually bad law, we, we didn't help him. I mean, it's, that's all there really is to say about it. Uh, but I don't, I still don't know who Sargon is. And it's, uh, you know, it's, that's where we're at with it. Okay. All right. Is he like your rival? Like, is he your arch nemesis? Um, a little bit. I've got a lot of them these days, but yeah. <laughs> I thought I was. It's disappointing. Um, oh, no, we just tweet every now and then. This is the guy that keeps me up at night. <laughs> and then you got to do it with Devin, who's, come on. <laughs> well, Devin, to be fair, Devin says you're a really cool dude. I respect Devin's opinion a lot. He said he really likes you, and I, I really respect. Not like I think Devin is a friend, but like I think Devin is really a really smart dude. So, and he vouched for you a lot. He, he I don't know, even off stream or whatever. Like he never said anything bad about you. He never had anything bad to say about you. So, I mean, I guess no. I, I love that. The first time Devin and I talked, we we basically almost got in a fist fight. Also, because I was trying to negotiate a players deal, he was fighting for the team, of course. Mm-hmm. And it's you know that's a contentious relationship, but. I'm really a big believer in mutually beneficial relationships and we're not squeezing out every dollar we can for the player. I'd rather the player be happy on CLG, stay a long time and have a good career. And that's why Devin and I have really, you know, come to terms on a lot of stuff. And I, I respect the hell out of them all. So I love that guy. Gotcha. Cool. Well, were there any other, well, what other, what else do you want to go over? <laughs> well, just cause I mean, I'm still being tweeted as, as, as we're talking, uh, just to go over the H3H3 H3 stuff. Oh. I mean, I, I don't know how to be, there's really not much to go over. I mean, we helped him a lot with his DMCA stuff. Uh-huh. He got sued. My partner, like I said, is a litigator. We started the case. Uh, Ethan and Ila moved to L.A. We were in New York. Uh, we're only licensed to litigate in New York. So he uh, moved out here. He also, the case exploded. To be perfectly frank, I don't think anybody expected it to go past posturing, and it turned into a real lawsuit. So uh, they got a huge law firm behind them. The FUPA money had to go to that, and that's really the long and short of it. I have nothing but love for them. Uh, it's not. Oh, and then the other thing is the, uh, you know, the, we messed up the paperwork. That's not true at all. We, we filed our removal. The, uh, the new attorney was at his son's wedding and didn't file his, uh, his taking it over in time. And then uh, nothing happened. The, the judge was just like, hey, file this. It was filed and that's it. I mean, literally nothing happened. Uh, so I know, and I like Leonard French. I just went out to drinks with, uh, for drinks with Leonard French. I, I respect him a lot, but 
you know, that video out of context sounds like it was this huge snafu in the lawsuit. It wasn't. Gotcha. Um, I can't, I mean, until all of that becomes public, I, I can't read dockets or anything, so I don't know anything about that, so I can't really, I usually, I'll just throw that in there. I mean, the dockets like to... are public. That's the only reason I can talk about it. I can't say anything more than that, but those dockets are public. Don't you need, like, a, like, like a lawyer login or whatever to view them? I mean, you can go to Pacer and pay 10 cents to see it, I think. 10 cents, fuck. <laughs> um... Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't want to dig into that stuff too much, just because I know there's a lot of. I mean, that's really all I can. Yeah, that's really yeah. all I can even say on it. Um. Okay, well, I guess, I guess most of it just came down to shit posting. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say, buddy. Listen, I mean, it, I know everybody wants blood. I'm happy to be mad at you still, but it's just there's not really a lot going on, and it sounds like we have all mutual friends, so sure. it's probably easier if. Uh, we don't hate. We tone it down. Two what? Steps. Um, yeah. Do you have any strong opinions on this New York City law that makes it so that if I accidentally misgender someone in the street, I get a hundred thousand dollar fine? <laughs> Wait, is that real? I'm not. I'm in California now on business. I I have no idea what's going on in New York, oh, and that's sure. not my kind of law, obviously. Okay. Yeah. No. Never mind. I'm just messing with you. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, does anybody else have any final? Do you have any final memes you want to bring up or whatever? I guess I won't shit post at you. It was hard. Or anymore. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, 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 I, you don't have to stop entirely. Mm-hmm. It's, I, I Can miss I, it. I wouldn't be able to let sleep. Let me, let me, let me be totally honest, and I'll speak to you earlier. So, like, my big problem, and I'm, I'm kind of glad you brought up the Fupa stuff, was that the, the impression that I had of you and your law firm was that you basically ran around and you talked a lot of shit, but then you never actually did anything. And that Fupa thing was also something that, that it kind of seemed like it, like it seemed like you talked, you hyped up that Fupa stuff a lot, but then I'd never heard of it, like you guys doing anything with it at all. So it just kind of seemed like you sat there on it. And, and I totally understand that with the Fupa thing in particular. The other stuff, I, I don't. Agree agree with as much because mm-hmm. normally when we pop into a reddit post and help someone they usually make a follow-up and, and thank us and yeah sure. that one doesn't hit the front page but it's out there the fupa stuff though yeah i mean he went to a big law firm they're charging him like you know big law prices it's i, I think he'll probably hit six figures in a single month sometimes he needs that money now i mean it's mm-hmm. just it's a reality of it and we still help people pro bono like i said there's videos out there thanking it but yeah that was a really good idea with not enough funding originally we were talking about making it a monthly patreon and stuff but there's really just no need to to squeeze money out of people for it when we can do what we've been doing for free and it doesn't bankrupt us. I drive a Kia and eat Taco Bell. I don't need a mansion and I'm happy to do it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We use it as marketing, too. I'm not ever going to lie about that. It's great for us when we help people, but we're still helping people. It's not just posturing and bullshitting. Gotcha. OK. Yeah, cool. I mean, I guess I really don't have anything else. Cool. Well, nice meeting you. Yeah, well, hey, I appreciate the conversation, buddy. I won't roast you on Twitter every time I have the chance to, all right? Yeah, deal. Good chat, and glad we cleared a lot of that up. Yeah, thanks a lot. I'll see you later, buddy. All right, later. Fuck. <laughs> well, honestly, that's kind of how I thought it was <laughs> going to go. <laughs> I didn't think he would be so big on the shit posting thing, but here we go. Are you guys happy now? Look at all the friend. Look at all the friends we're making around the world, guys. <laughs>